Hello GIS users. Today we're going to be discussing the process of getting point data out of a GPS and put into Global Mapper. The process for this is pretty simple. Uh, if you export the files from your GPS, typically the exported file format is a GPX. And Global Mapper can handle this directly. But let's say we also have a Excel file. In the case of an Excel file, we'll actually have to export this as a CSV, comma separated value or comma delimited um, table. And we currently have one that we're going to use for this. And these are our easting and northing values for the point data that we want to add. One comment I will make about this is when you're out in the field collecting point data, one of the things that should be done is you should tie your GPS point to a point on your map by giving it either what we call a station ID or a strike dip ID or something like that. So I would actually add in an additional field here that is that ID field, whether it be a strike dip ID or a station ID or something like that so that there is a field here that corresponds to what is on your map. In this case, we can do something like SD0001 or something like that, denoting that this is a strike dip value. And then let's say we also had a field station, something like that. This gives us an ID field that is then corresponded to our map. And on our map, we can write SD1, FS1, whatever the case may be, so that then very quickly, these features are identified on our map sheet. And then let's say we also have a field notebook as well. And the field notebook is where we actually write down the strike dip of this information. So here we could say, you know, this is the azimuth, so we'll say this is 150, and then the dip value associated with that is 25. And for this field station, we could have another value that is, you know, we could record the sample ID that we collected at this field station. So this was, you know, the salt. Uh, let's use date fields because I'm a fan of that. PLM, I collected it. 17. Oh, 201. So this is 2017, February 1st. This is the basalt I collected at this site on February 1st, 2017. Then we can go ahead and send that sample off and get it age dated or whatever the case may be, geo, uh, geochemistry on. We have a field that we can actually attach those records that we get back from the age analysis or from the geochemistry analysis. So that's more a comment on what this table should ultimately become. There's a couple steps in there. First and foremost, most GPSs will also allow you to export the name of the waypoint as well. And that's what I was saying with this. If on your GPS, when you set that first waypoint, yes, you go ahead and you get your easting and your northing, but you can also name that to be something specific and export that with the table as well. And then your field notebooks and your field map have something tied to each other as an ID so you can identify these very quickly. Then later on you would come back in and put in your azimuth and inclination or your station or your sample ID or whatever the case may be. But then these come in automatically. Your point ID will come in automatically um, from the GPS. So it's an extra step to go ahead and type all this information when you're out in the field. But it's also a good way to make sure that you have good, clear, consistent data all throughout and you can tie these things back and forth to one another and if you know anything about join tables you have a feature a field excuse me a field that you can use right off the bat to go ahead and join these things together 
Okay, so we have our Excel file currently. And what we want to do is save as a comma separated value, a comma delimited value, CSV. And when we do this, what it does is it takes all of the Excel file extension stuff, all of the things that makes it an Excel file, out of it and just makes it a straight table separated by commas. This is the general ASCII format that Global Mapper can handle. It can handle the GPX because that's an ASCII based file format as is CSV. So we're going to go ahead and save this as a CSV. That's okay. And yes, we want to keep the CSV format. Okay, so now we've got our CSV. This is a current project that we have that we're working on. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to add in the CSV values to this map. They should show up in the same field area. So it gives us also a good check when we're adding in our GPS values from the beginning. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on File, Open Generic Text File. This is our generic ASCII file. And we're going to go to the folder where that where our CSV is. So there's my CSV value. You'll notice that the Excel, just so you know, in that same folder are all of these documents. Only documents that Global Mapper can handle will show up in this folder. So here is the comma separated value for our GPS values, and here is that same table as an Excel worksheet. And we don't see this one, but we do see this one, just the same as these two right here. So let's go back to Global Mapper and look at these side by side. So here is our quad ticks CSV. And here is our GPS values as a CSV. So we can only see the files that are that generic ASCII based table system. So we want to go ahead and add in our GPS point. Okay, now the dialog box for our import options is open. And we have a whole bunch of settings to go through before we can actually specify how we're adding in our points. In this case, because we know these are points, we're going to select the point only option. There are other options for different types of import of the data that's contained in that generic ASCII format. Um, and then the next thing we want to do is specify our coordinate or order. And in this case, the data table that we had started with our easting value and then had our northing value in the column to the right of that. So the very first column was easting and the second column was our northing value. And we can leave our coordinate format as default because we don't have any of these specified. If it was in decimal degrees, we'd want to use this one. If it was in decimal seconds, we want to use this one. For easting and northing, we don't have decimal points. We have whole meter values, so we can just go ahead and leave that as is. Now, as I was specifying, our easting was our first column and our northing was our second column. So we can have it skip a column or skip a row if we really want to. Because our first column was the easting, we don't need to skip any columns. And because we don't have any um, uh, headings for that that say like easting and northing, we have no rows to skip either. Our coordinate pairs are one per row. And it says one per line, but that means one per row. So because of that, we can leave this as one as well. So no columns to skip, no rows to skip, and there's only one coordinate pair per row. Sometimes data is recorded with our zone, our UTM zone specified. So that's what this coordinate line prefix is kind of set as. So if we had, a, for example, our coordinates for this area of this map is 13S, 34,
340,000, and, and I'm guessing I'm ballparking this, so. Sometimes um, easting and northing is recorded like this. Sometimes latitude and longitude is recorded in a similar way with the zone, then the easting, then the northing. Um, this option here actually allows us to eliminate that zone portion of it so that we can just see our easting value. So that would be one way to eliminate that should that be in there. But because this is just easting and northing, we can go ahead and ignore that. Um, we saved this as a comma separated value, so it's comma delimited. So we can go ahead and preset that to be that. If we weren't sure, we could do auto tech. If it was space or a tab, we could use it that way. Because we saved this as a CSV, we know our delimiter is a comma. If all of our points contained in this CSV were strike and dips of bedding, we could go ahead and predefine from our FGDC template as 06.02 inclined bedding, and we could go ahead and get those attributes preset for us. Because we're uncertain as to whether or not these points actually contain bedding or a combination of inclined bedding, horizontal bedding, vertical bedding, and uh, station points, we shouldn't apply a default value to this. So we shouldn't just go ahead and leave this as unknown point feature. But there is the option to go ahead and pre-assign loaded point feature classifications. This is our template stuff that we worked in previous videos. So if we wanted to, we could predefine things. Um, for the rest of these, we're going to go ahead and skip. Just note that there's the option to do more than just what we're specifying. But because we're just trying to get these GPS points in as uh, locations, we can go ahead and move on. Now, that being said, when we were talking over here about coordinates, when we talked about 13S, that has to deal with our coordinate system and the UTM system itself. The points are recorded in a GPS using a specific coordinate system. There is no way in this window to specify that coordinate system. And this is a point of issue that I want to bring up. It is very important that when you're using a GPS to collect control points or collect waypoints, that you know what coordinate system that those points are being collected in. It's very important in my opinion to go ahead and actually put it in that document as well so it would be a good idea somewhere in here to denote that these points maybe are in some specific coordinate system so you could do it here and go ahead and say utm nad 83 now, being that that says UTM NAT83, I know that these points are in a UTM coordinate system, and the datum is based on a NAD83 datum and projection. So that's one of the areas where we need to be careful, is there is a difference between a projected coordinate system and a geographic coordinate system. Geographic coordinate systems are just based off of the geoid that we're plotting these points on or we're collecting these points on. Projected actually takes our geoid and flattens it out. So we need to be careful and we need to really understand specifically what our points, what our waypoints and our GPS are being collected in as far as the coordinate system. So for the future use of GPSs and for uh, being nice to people that are going to use your control points, make sure you go ahead and include what coordinate system those points were collected in from the GPS, in the GPS. There's a way to change this in your GPS. There's a way to look this up in your GPS. 
if you pass these points to someone else and they don't have your GPS, they have no idea what coordinate system you collected those points in. And then when you pass that to that person, they have no way of knowing how to add those points in when it comes to the coordinate system. So let's look at this really quick. We know this is easting and northing. This is not latitude and longitude. And we know that this was collected in a UTM NAT83 projected coordinate system. So knowing that, now how do we set that in here? Oh, this is a blind click into the next phase of our import options. And I don't like blind clicks. They drive me nuts. But we need to do it. We click OK. And then it's going to go ahead and warn us. Uh oh. Then it's going to go ahead and warn us that we have to select a coordinate system for this because we have an unknown projection or data. And that's why I was discussing with the file that we need to make sure that we let the people using our point data or that we know when we're importing our own point data that we know what coordinate system our GPS was actually using. So now it's telling us you have to specify this. We'll click OK. Now we know that this data was collected in the UTM projection zone 13 and the datum is NAD 83. There are times that if this was in like lat lawn, we would need to change this. And this says projection right here and I kind of don't like that because if we go to our geographic, that is not a projection, that's a geographic coordinate system, meaning that there is no projection associated with so I take objection to this being called projection, but we're going to ignore that. But if you had lat lawn coordinates that were exported directly from a GPS, this is probably what you'd want to use unless you know that your GPS was collecting in a projected coordinate system. And again, you'd have to find out from your GPS manufacturer or from the literature about your GPS which format these were collected in. So I know that these points were collected in a UTM, not to be confused with a transverse mercator, where again, a transverse mercator is not projected at all. This says projection, but it's not a projected coordinate system. So we can't specify our zone for it, and we know that these were collected using a UTM zone 13S NAT83. So we know that this one isn't right. So let's go to our UTM. And sure enough, then we get our zone 13, NAT 83, and these are the specific parameters associated with this projection. So now we can go ahead, now that we've set that and we say OK, then we can see that some of our points have been added in. So this point has been added in. Oops, that point right there has been added in, that point has been added in, and now we've added in our points from our GPS.